Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? You're now tuned into Ill Vibe Theory, your number one source for underground hip hop in the Las Vegas Valley. What's good, Kellen? What's up, everyone? Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, from Mondays, 4 to 7 p.m., we extended an hour, and it gives us more time to do a lot more fun stuff. So thank you guys for tuning in with us, as always. But we're about to get in this interview with Busy Crook. We announced it before. He's from Miami. He just put out his project 84, and we played his track My Only Way Back. And we're going to play another track after we get into this interview with him. So let's bring him on. Yeah, let's bring him on. What's good, Busy? What's good? What's good? What's good, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm out here um, on his homegrown tour with Chris Webby. It's freezing. I saw that. Where are you at right now? Tonight we are in Pittsburgh. Nice, Pittsburgh, for sure. very nice. That's a good look. His Webby's done a lot. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Yo, that's that, so good. That's a, um, that's a uh, that's a big temperature difference. I could tell. Like I know Miami's like eighty oh, degrees yeah. right now, isn't it? Oh man, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and my boys that are with me from Miami, we're like exact. Like it's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. What's been like one of your craziest experiences on tour so far? Since we're talking about it. Oh, man. Uh, it's been a couple. We went to this house party after uh, after a show with some of the guys that were also on the bill. And it, it was weird. Like We went to the house, and there was like a giant blow-up doll. <laughs> what? On a Christmas tree. On a Christmas tree? And we're like, yeah. That's yeah, weird. Kind of got out of there. <laughs> that's man. funny man that sounds ham bro but um hey so you know starting everything off uh first and foremost man tell us a little bit about yourself busy crook you know about the music you do tell us a little bit about you man yeah definitely uh well yeah my name is busy crook and um kid from miami trying to win a grammy i represent a movement called good luck and it's about you know just inspiring each other and all of us you know, everybody on this call, the listeners, at one point, you told somebody what you wanted to do, and they wished you good luck. And me, you know, this is something I wanted to do as a kid. So growing up in school, when I would go up, and everybody would say what they wanted to be, and I would say rapper, you know, the teacher would be like, good luck. And it's just something I heard my whole life. Mm. And, you know, I said, well, you know what, let me take it and give good luck a new meaning. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I dropped the tape called 84, and it did real well, and it was inspired by Michael Jordan and... And uh, the year he was drafted, and uh, yeah, that's really creative because you know you do hear that a lot when people are saying "good luck." It's like, what do you mean behind that? Like, are you saying I can't? Yeah, you know, so there's like a double yeah. intention behind that. That's really creative. Even from relationships or past friendships, like I was going through my emails the other day, and I seen that so many relationships ended in the words "good luck." Hmm. Mm. You know, it's just, you know. Yeah, it's like, what do you mean? So, that's true. I never thought about it like that. That's a really good spin on that. Yeah. You know, we want to give it a new meaning. Let's make good luck mean you can do it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. And um, tell us a little bit more about your music, the vision you had while making it, and what we can, what you hope to achieve there. Like, what's your end goal with, at the end of this? I know you said you want to get a Grammy, so... <laughs> Yeah, my end goal, as cliche as it sounds, is to just do my part in changing the world through music that I can, you know. Nice. It's all I've ever known, and it's what I've been in love with. And as I grow older, I learn that, you know, I really want to inspire. And, you know, my music is just real. Uh, it's no one particular sound, you know, because I, you know, I make music based off emotions, and nobody has just one emotion. Exactly. So music is like a journal to me, so it's just based off, you know, stuff that I've been through. And, again, I use it as a filter, you know, Growing up, I was a quiet kid, and music is where I opened up. Hmm. So, you know, when I when I get in the studio, I feel like that's my open journal, so I don't filter anything, you know. Um, a lot of 84, you know, I was telling a story and opened up, and, you know, I went through uh, suicidal depression for a while. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's it's a problem that a lot of teenagers and young adults have, and you know, nobody speaks on it, you know, and mm-hmm. you'd be surprised how many people heard that record, like rappers and even football players, and they came up to me and they were like, man, I know exactly what you was going through. Because, mm-hmm. you know, hello, I, like people like that, I'm sorry, uh, you know, a lot of people like that who have those issues, they don't, ha- they don't really have anybody to look up to. Yeah. So even with this next project, like, 
there's a dope record called Hero, and it's just dedicated to anybody who made it through that. Mm. Wow. So you're getting deep. That's crazy. Definitely. Because <laughs> people usually don't open up in that, especially, you know, in hip-hop as much as, you know, but, other genres mm. might. So that's that's really cool. I dig that a lot. Thank you. And uh, your Project 84, um, you know, Tell us a little bit about the concept and the cover art and the whole creative process behind it. I know you said, you know, the draft year of Michael Jordan and and it was definitely, you know, the right. mixtape cover caught a lot of a lot of um eyes. I know a, a couple of my boys actually downloaded the tape just directly off the off the cover. To uh, art. Yeah, on a hot new yeah, that's dope. And Thank everything. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I've actually got that a lot. Um well, the tape in itself, yeah, 84 represents the year Jordan was drafted and the, you know the story and metaphor behind it is Michael Jordan was a third draft pick. You know, in that year, he was a rookie amongst other rookies. So, mm-hmm. you know, at that point, nobody expected, yo, Michael Jordan is going to be the greatest of all time. This guy's going to, you know, just be great. Yeah. And that's where I feel like I'm at in my career. I feel like 84 is, you know, me coming into the game, and I'm a rookie. But deep down inside, you know, I know what I want to do, and I know what I have to do, and I know what I have to work for, just as Jordan did in 1984. No, that's creative. I dig that because I didn't know the background behind that. That's really nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was like my birth year, but yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought that at first until I looked at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm 21. Nice, nice. And also, um, so obviously you're from Miami. Can you tell us a little bit about the music scene out there and your perspective on it, especially coming out as a rookie and you know just getting in the game, as you said. Oh, man, yeah, the, the Miami music scene definitely has changed and evolved um, mm-hmm. since the last few years. There's a lot of talent, and there's more talent than, than the world really knows. Like, the Miami music scene right now in itself, is, it just, it's just different. You know, it's just so many different sounds and so many different styles, and, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's coming. Yeah, nice. I, I, we always ask that question just because, like, you know, just, just take just taking a comp- a look at at the music scenes of the, of you know the nation and, right. and take take a look at different yeah, I mean, cities. Yeah, like most places, I mean Miami does have the same issue that a lot of places tend to have as to where the city, or at least the people in charge of the city, don't really support the artists as much. Mm-hmm. Yo, that that's great. That's, that's a common. That's problem. crazy because um like yeah. that that's our city. We we're we're based out of UNLV here in Las Vegas. And right. in regards to like the music scene out here, man, it, it's definitely like the the problem of 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 not getting our music out to the world is just solely based on like the the lack of support. Mm-hmm. So you know when you look right. at cities like that, you, you care compare it to like L. A. Or, or or Chicago or New York. You know, you, it's really a huge difference. And and I'm just glad that I see you putting on for your city. You know, so it, yeah. it's definitely something to note. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely trying, but. You no, know, yeah, it's like that in a lot of places. So what, you know, which a lot of, unfortunately, what you have to do a lot of times is actually get out. Mm-hmm. Ironic as it seems. So I came to New York. I've been living in New York for the past few months. And, you know, I've just been doing a lot of shows. I got my first tour. Um, wow. it's just, I've been getting a lot of love out here, radio, supporting everything, you know. Wow. What do you think has, like, been the biggest difference between, you know, your transition to New York? Do you think that the things you've accomplished just in that short amount of time would have been possible in Miami? No, not at all. To this day in Miami, I haven't. Wow. Um, You know, like, I have, like, in New York, I haven't performed at a venue as big as I did in New York off my first show. You know, just little things like that. And it's just because the people in charge, and I just feel like why it is everywhere, it's for a lot of reasons, you know, it's a lot of egos, or a lot of people are just scared to take risks, you know, like DJs don't want to be the first ones to break something new. Mm-hmm. At least in Miami, that's the case, like, there's no Miami on radio outside of Ross, and, yeah. and yeah. you know, that's so true, because, I mean, you have your, um, you know, Ashley Outrageous and a few other people that you can name right, coming right, right. out, you know, yeah. in Miami that are trying to, you know, support those underground artists. So that's interesting. And Ashley, yeah, Ashley, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, Ashley's just been one of those people who really cared about the culture in Miami. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's the issue. There's not enough people like her. Yeah. 
that's so true man I, it's just it's so crazy hearing this from from you coming out of a different city because i feel like we have the same problem every like everything you just right. said is the same thing that i've said like multiple times in regards to like the music scene and everything and having to reach out of the city and stuff so it's definitely nice to you know hear that yeah yeah like that like and it's crazy because even like seeing it from the other side like new york doesn't support new york artists yeah enough mm. you know the only place i've really been to where they support their artists to the max is like atlanta like you go to atlanta atlanta mm -hmm. radio is all atlanta artists yeah man that's so true. Someone was just like Twitter ranting about that. I don't know if you caught um, The Breakfast Club. They had, or not The Breakfast Club, I'm sorry, Hot 97. They had an interview with Elliot Wilson. And I can't remember the guy's name, but he's like his assistant or something. And they were like going back and forth with Ebro saying like, hey, you guys don't support New York artists, the underground people. All you guys play is, you know, this mainstream stuff. So that's yeah. a common argument like across mm. the board. So that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And it's, Sad, but you know, it, man, Atlanta though, like that's that's where I'm trying to be. Yeah, <laughs> is everyone is everyone. Yeah, I like I, yo, every time I go to Atlanta, you know, <laughs> I cut on the radio and just hear stuff that we don't hear till later, mm. and then it's a product of Atlanta. Yeah. That's so crazy, like, because most, like, um, you know, obviously commercial radios, they're only playing the stuff that makes them money. So, I mean, that underground, the fact that they can make an impact mm. to get on there, that's crazy. But you're headed in that direction, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and, and with you know back to the music side of things um so 84 and there's certainly a huge mix of, of different you know a, a lot of different production off, off of the, the project you know you got your instrumental joints and then you got the joints that you you know you turn up to so so what's your process right, right. In, in regards to like you know choosing that production and and, and making sure that your vision comes it's just, through that? it's just all about where i'm at at the moment you know like mm -hmm. I couldn't do a record like no reason if mm -hmm. the night prior wasn't crazy, you know? Mm. Gotcha. Um, so definitely, yeah, I, ba I go, you know, based off the emotion that's set and I just go through a ton of beats and normally when I hear it, it I don't got to look no further. Nice. Okay. Nice. And there were some really dope features from Estelle, Nelly, Melody, Thornton. And tell us about where those, how those came about. Like that's some pretty big names. And I did see yeah. you had a picture on your Twitter with Nelly, and you were talking about bringing back your childhood. Like, talk about how much they inspired you. Yeah, Nelly's definitely, um, I learned a lot from him, man, you know, and, and the, the wildest thing about him is how humble he is. Mm. You know, my first time meeting him because, you know, before him being a friend or mentor or anything, you know, Nelly was probably one of maybe the fourth album I bought. So, you know, I'm a fan first. Yeah. So just meeting this guy and this guy being so humble was kind of like, wow, you know, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. We linked through my manager. Uh, shout out to my manager, AG. He was a and uh Nelly's M.O. album. Wow. Mm. So, uh, yeah, we actually made a connection on Nelly's last mix say, called Scorpio Season. I was actually on the second record mm. um, with crazy. Play the Truth. And then, um, actually, it's crazy. The top of the year, like, literally... Uh, December 31st, I get a call from my manager. He's like, yo, send me your info. Nelly's going to fly you out to Atlanta. And then, you know, we just built a relationship ever since. Wow. wow that's, that's amazing, man. That's really crazy. Yeah. That is so Estelle, cool. Um, yeah. Estelle, my manager, also connected. And then, um, yeah, it, when, I, when, 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 when I was working on the record, I just, you know, I just heard Estelle on it. I didn't know how I was going to get her on it. Or, you know, I just thought to my mind, yo, you know, Estelle would kill this. And um, it's crazy. It ended up happening. I sent it to my manager, and he was like, yo, you know, I'm going to get Estelle on this. And then we made it happen. Wow, so you got good peeps. <laughs> yeah. <really> good. <laughs> That's what's up. And, and you said, you said too, um, I, I forgot to ask as well, um, I know you've done some stuff with Treasure Truth in the past. As you just said, you did that record with him. So can we expect anything with him um, coming up soon? I know he just dropped his tape too. Right. Um, I would definitely love to work with Trade of Truth. Um, the Nelly record was actually our first record. We were supposed to shoot a video, like a big video to it, and um, everybody's schedule was just different. So mm -hmm. me and Nelly ended up just doing it in studio. But yeah, I would definitely love to work with Trade of Truth. Definitely. Nice. And speaking of people you'd like to work with, who are some other artists that you would 
you know, eventually like to do some music with? Oh, man. Well, you know, I got the guys everybody wants to work with, like Eminem and Kanye yeah. and Jay-Z. But I, then there's also, you know, I would like to work with, like, I'm at a point where I just want to create. I just want to mess around and push boundaries and do new new stuff. So I would definitely love to work with, like, a Lana Del Rey or Lady Gaga or even Adele. Oh, wow. Mm. That'd be tight. That'd be really cool. And, and I know you noted Eminem as well. And, and taking it back to to one of the records you actually dropped, and like I think it was in the summer or so. Um, I I remember um, I was just on two dope boys, and and then I see this this title. It says email from Kanye West, busy crook, and I'm like, what's this? What's this record? And then you press play, and you're like, you know, you really hear the track. And then the first thing I thought of was like the storytelling aspects of like uh, like Eminem Stan record. So, you know, tell us a little bit of, about the inspiration behind behind the emails from Kanye West track and, and the storytelling feature to it. Because it, it was a nice record, man, especially the flashing light sample. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely a big Kanye and Eminem fan. So, you know, we were just in the studio one night and I knew I wanted to, I knew I wanted to, uh, pay homage in some sort of way. I didn't, I, I, I didn't think of taking a fan route. I, I just didn't know how I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just built up to it. You know, it was like 7 a.m. And we was getting ready to go. And I was like, no, wait, I got an idea. Mm-hmm. And we banged out to like 12 and, you know, created that. Dang, till 12? 7 and 12, though? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was working on it for a while. Yeah, that, that, that record, though, it was really, um, it was nice. It, it was definitely like something that... Uh, a lot of people, I don't think, would would try to touch on, but but you definitely like. There was really like the the way you did it, bro. It was really something that you could feel. You feel me? So, right, right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And there's a way that you can do it right, and some people mess yeah. up with that. So <laughs> that's good. <You> <laughs> and, I, I I just don't think you know a lot of people. Enough people don't pay homage nowadays. You know. No, yeah. that's true. That's so true. Definitely. Like hip hop is hip hop <clears throat> form that some evolving and you know and evolving in a sense that it was inspired by something else so everybody was inspired and Definitely. enough people don't say hey you know i, I look up to you no. yeah that's so true so, that's so true who are some people that you grew up listening to that inspired you you know you said that you from a young age you knew you wanted to be a rap artist so who were some people you looked up to yeah, I actually started off listening to pop. I didn't know rap existed. So <laughs> I think we all being did. That pop was, <laughs> yeah, like being that pop was the first music that yeah. my mom uh, put me on. That's what I fell in love with. You know, I just knew I loved music. So it was like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and mm-hmm. Britney Spears <laughs> and stuff like that. Like there was a time I wanted a J-Lo album and I didn't know how to ask my parents for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I made, Yeah, I made my sister do it and then I took the CD. Which CD oh, was and then, it? You know, the first, it was like uh, the, the remix, J-Lo to the remix, because it had 50 on it before oh. 50 came out. <laughs> wow, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was dope. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, one summer, my cousin was babysitting me, and she had a Grammy, I think it was a 99 or 2000 mm. compilation album, and I heard Eminem's uh, My Name Is on it, and I instantly just kept running it back a hundred times the whole day. And then I'm like, I turned around and I'm like, yo, I want to be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Epiphany. That's so tight. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like waiting all day for my mom to get home. <clears throat> and I'm like, mom, I know what I want to be. And she, she, her eyes light up expecting, you know, what she wants to hear. And I'm like a rapper. Mm. And she kind of brushed me off. Really? How does she feel about it yeah. now? <clears throat> now she definitely, um, you know, me and my mother's relationship kind of, we kind of got a little distant because she wanted me to go to college so bad. And, mm. you know, a time before I was touring or getting music out, you know, I was home just trying to come up with how to do it. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, she, she was just trying to push me to go to college and I didn't want to do it. And, you know, now I, I feel like she feels like she should have supported me a little mm. more. But, yeah, she she's definitely happy for me. She actually came to my first show ever. Oh, wow. In That's Miami. Incredible. Art Basel, yeah. That actually, oh, you were there too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone was I, there. Yeah, actually, I'm saying. <laughs> so I used to be, I used to be too nervous to let her come to my show. So oh. <laughs> she never came, and I was finally like, I might come. That is so cool. 
That's so cool. And I wanted to ask you, because it's been a thing that I know that we encounter, you know, as being students as well, like, and then trying to accomplish your dreams. So how do you feel about, you know, having to balance your, you like, priorities, which would be like people on your head about going to school, or maybe if you had a job, how do you balance what you truly want to do, which is pursue your music career and give that all your time with, you know, your other things that you have to worry about? Um... No, music in my—I mean, in my mind, music always came first, no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just what I wanted. Like I didn't go—I wasn't going to parties in high school or prom or anything. I was just in my room, you know, just just working. Nice, nice. And um, yeah, I kind of just stuck to it, and uh. Hello. Oh, hello? Oh, hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, my, yeah, my bad. My, my, my face put it on mute. Oh, oh no, no, you're good, good man. <laughs> <laughs> we do it, too. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of just, um, just stuck to the music. That's good. That's really good to hear. And, and just, uh, just going back to, like, Miami and stuff, it's crazy because, like, um, man, I wish I, I had hit you if I was in Miami. I, I was in Miami in August. And um, I don't know. It was just a crazy. Wait, so you're from Miami? Oh no, no, no. I'm not. I, I went to visit for like a like oh, okay. a, like a weekend, and man, um, I, I don't know. I I got kind of like the tourist experience of 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 being there. You know, we did the more more touristy touristy things. So yeah. like, it, you know, next time I go out to Miami, man, what, what you think I should like? You know, take the time to check out and everything. <laughs> did you um? Did you go out like to? Like clubs and stuff. Man, I, I'm not even old enough to go to the clubs <laughs> yet, man. That's that's the problem. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on what you want to do. Miami is just everything, everything in one place. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, like, what, like, like, as far as what to do and what? Shoot, actually, more specifically, where's the best place to eat at, man? <laughs> Oh, the best place to eat. Uh, <laughs> they got bomb wings at this, this place called Snappers. Snappers. I'm about to I'm about to check that out then. Snappers. Okay, for Snappers, sure. Snappers, yeah, 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 definitely best wings and fries. And and on top of that too, I know I, I'm I'm a big fan of like Latin food. So last time I went out there, I I, I tried all the Cuban like a couple of Cuban places. Oh man! So I don't know what the best you place go to, is. You gotta go to a place called La Gran Hut. How you say it? It's called La Grand Hot. Okay, I'm about to Google L-A-G-R-A-N-G-A. that. L A G R A N G A. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, it's the best. Like when I was living out there, I was literally going every day. It was my routine. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm about to do this. Got to get the number two. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta I, check that out. I'm gonna definitely do that when we go out there, man. Yeah. And have you ever visited in Vegas? No, I, every time I plan on going to Vegas, which is when I'm like in the LA, uh-huh. and we have a few hours left, we're like, yo, let's go to Vegas. And yeah. Then goes through. Yeah. My birthday's actually on the 27th, and I think that's what I might do. Why not? Hey, hey, if you come to Vegas, man, let us know. We can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I need to get to Vegas. That's what's up. Yeah, you got to come out yeah, here. Man, we we got to put in some work, bro, if you really come out here, man. Yeah. For sure. And back to the music, what can we expect from you in the future? Like, what are you working on right now? Right now, I got 84 Off Season. It's an EP, and it's coming out on my birthday, December 27th. Okay. Okay. And it's basically an EP of uh, a bunch of records recorded for 84 that didn't make 84. Mm -hmm. Mm. And it's just something I want to give out to the fans um, to hold them off to No Hard Fellas, which is like my real, real next project. And it's coming out crazy. Mm. Like a lot of people said, eighty four sounded like an album. Wow! And you know, no hard feelings. And then imagine what the album is going to sound like. Definitely. definitely. And who are some big names? I know you got some <laughs> that you can give us an exclusive on. <laughs> uh, right now it's it's so early because we don't want to put it out till March. But you're right. I've been in the studio with like Naima Supreme. Um, mm. She's on the Timberland. And uh, my man Jordan Banks, he's dope. He's from Philly. He's real dope, actually. And uh, he's actually on a new record with Meek, that Heaven record. Oh, he's yeah. On the chorus. Yeah. Oh, that's a 
But yeah, it's early. We no- we normally don't go for the features until the project is done. But yeah. you know, um, me and them too. You know, we're all coming up, and we decided to get in and just start working and put some amazing stuff together. <laughs> nice, nice. So that's really good. And that was all the questions we had for you. Were there was there anything else that you wanted to add? Um. Just, just look out for everything, you know. Uh, 2014 is working. Is we're working on it. Um, you know, definitely look out for uh, the good luck movement. We, you know, we want to take it up further. And good luck tank, which is my my best friend who's in the group, and you know he's working on some stuff. And we just plan on doing a lot of big things this year. And uh, yeah. Very nice. That's what's up. Well, we'll definitely be posting all of your stuff and letting the people know where they could find you. Can you let them know where they could find you on social media and all that? Yeah, my Twitter is Busy Crook, B I Z Z Y C R O O K. Instagram is the same thing. And uh, my new website is actually up, busycrookmusic.com. Nice, nice. Definitely. We'll definitely be pushing that link forward and letting the people know where you're at. But we wanted to get into this song as well. If you could introduce Evergreen for a, for us from your project. Yeah, what's going on? It's the kid, Busy Crook. We about to play Ever. You said Ever, ever again. Evergreen, Evergreen. right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Ever, ever yeah, again. Ever, ever again. again. Yeah, yeah. My bad. It's, it's in the again. system. Yeah. Wrong. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it's Ever Again featuring Sophie Green. It's one of my favorites, actually, of the project. Yeah, it's our, it's definitely our favorite as well, so that's why we had to put that in there. Definitely. So we're yeah, going to get you. into this. This is Busy Crook Ever Again on Ill Vibe. Here we go. Let's go. Uh, it's 84 in the old. Busy Crook. Young Mike. Young got the kid with a drink. We ain't even had no green for my sister for ten. They wasn't showing me no love back when I was 16. Now they going through AG just to get a 16. I used to ask them, they was like, no, man. My sister's 18 now, damn. I t- 